So before Paul, early Christians believed that Prophet Jesus asked them to repent and obey the commandments to have eternal life in paradise. But after Paul, new Christians believe that you don't have to obey the commandments to do anything to enter paradise. You just have to say that Jesus is son of God or part of a trinity and he was crucified and resurrected from death. How convenient. This means that if you are a murderer or a rapist who believes in the resurrection of Jesus, you will be in paradise. And if you're a righteous person who prays to God and donates to the poor and helps society, but doesn't believe Paul's claim about Jesus, you will be in hell. Have you ever seen a judge in court saying to a criminal, instead of sending you to jail for your bank robbery, I will kill my son to forgive you and set you free. A debt must be repaid to God, only it's not about restoring a sense of justice and honor in God, but rather in finding a source for God's wrath due to our sin. Jesus took our place, taking upon himself the curse of immeasurable pain that was rightfully ours, so that we could go free. Again, what sort of God is so filled with wrath that he demands that his son die so that he can be satisfied? Give it a second. Think about it. And instead of punishing the criminal for his mistake, the judge will kill his son instead. His son. That's amazing news for the criminal. Why wouldn't someone who loves to live a sinful life believe that? It's so easy and convenient, just believe a story and do whatever you want in life without limits. And then enter God's eternal paradise. But is that really fair? You tell me, if Adolf Hitler believed in the Trinity and the resurrection story, he should be in eternal paradise, right? But is that really fair? I ask you, do you keep the laws and the commandments? You say no. I say, why not? He says, the law is nailed to the cross. Why not? He says, we are living in the grace. That's what the Christian says. You're living in the grace. I say, where did you get this? This idea that the law is nailed to the cross is done away with. Where did you get it? So he quotes me. Philippians, Galatians, Corinthians, Thessalonians, Colossians, and so who's this? Who's this? Timothy? Romans? Who's all this? What's this? Who's that? He said, Paul, 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 Paul. I said, who's your master? He said, Jesus. What does he say? You're contradicting Jesus. And Jesus said, the disciple is not greater than the master. Master is Jesus. What he tells you, I say, I listen to my master, Jesus. He never had the pig. He, none of his disciples ever touched that pork. You call it pork, ham, bacon, whatever you call it. He never touched that stuff. None of his disciples ever touched it. And you are all pig eaters. Christians. Where did you get this? He said, Peter had a dream. On that dream, now you eat pigs. When my master never ate it, he wouldn't eat it. You know, it's abhorrent thing. He killed 2,000 pigs. One hit. He destroyed them all. You know that? But now you don't listen to him. You are now living in the grace. I said, are you circumcised? He says, no. I said, why aren't you? It's a major commandment God gave. Your Lord was Christ, Jesus Christ was circumcised. I said, what is good for your God should be good for you. No, you won't circumcise. Why won't you? This is the law of God. He entered into between Abraham and his descendants forever. And you claim to be spiritual descendants. How does that absolve you? Is Jesus was circumcised and you are not? He said, no. He says, Paul said, circumcision, circumcision is nothing and non-circumcision is nothing. I said, Jesus says, not even one jot or one tittle is to pass from the law. Can't you see? You are not following Jesus. You're following Paul, Paul, Paul. He is the real founder of Christianity. Paul, not Jesus. After that, Paul's new religion was mixed with Roman and Greek paganism. Number one, this is not Jesus. Jesus was not a European white male. Forensic scientists have done facial reconstruction of 2,000-year-old skulls from Palestine in order to get a sense of what Jesus might have looked like. Number two, Jesus was not even born in the winter. 
Chippers were tending their flocks outside, which only happens in warm weather. And it was also the time of the taxes in the north. It was not winter, not the 25th of December, and not the 7th of January. The sun was very important to the people in the northern hemisphere because of the very cold weather. They would pray to the sun god every winter to bring back the warmth of the sun. In 274 BCE, Rome established this day to be the birthday of the sun god. Later, under their influence, the church adopted this day as an annual religious festival for the believers. So, the birthday of the sun god became the birthday of the son of God. Shocking as it sounds, followers of Jesus Christ in both America and England helped pass laws making it illegal to observe Christmas. Believing it was an insult to God to honor a day associated with ancient paganism, according to Shocked by the Bible, 2008. Even the Christmas tree is an old pagan ritual. Can't you see your religion is changing over time? Can't you see that government after government is writing what you should believe in? Number 3. Easter or Estera. Estera is the Teutonic goddess of the spring. Her symbol was rabbit and egg. Pagans were celebrating their spring god every year with eggs. This pagan festival was adopted by the church only in the 8th century. It has nothing to do with Jesus. Number 4. Trinity is an old pagan religion concept. The Babylonians worshipped the trinity of Nana, Shamash, and Ishtar. The Egyptians worshipped the trinity of Amun, Ra, and Ta. Hinduism believes in the trinity of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. The tribes of Northwestern Europe worshipped the trinity of three female deities. The Persians believed in the triad of Ahura, Mazda, Mitra, and Anahita. Are you still sure you are worshipping God? Number 4. This is not the cross. This is the Ankh. It's the Egyptian symbol of resurrection at the time of pharaohs in old Egypt. This mix that we have of pagan religions is a version of Christianity that you're being taught now in school, churches, and on television. In 1945, exactly in the city of Naga Hammadi, Egypt, we discovered several manuscripts like the Gospel of Thomas, the Gospel of Truth, the Gospel of Judas, the Coptic Gospel of the Egyptians, and many others. They are currently housed in the Coptic Museum in Cairo, Egypt. They are proved authentic, carbon dated, and yet, the church refuses to add them to the Bible officially because they have information about the original Christians that contradicts the current pagan belief. In the first gospel, Gospel of Peter, Jesus was not tortured nor crucified. That happened to someone else. In the second gospel, Book of Sitt al-Akbar, Jesus was saved by God. God raised him to heaven and they executed another man. In the next gospel, Amal Yohanna, no harm has fallen upon Jesus. But they don't want you to know that. If you know that, you will not go to them for confession or holy water anymore. Take care. For the medieval church, the need to keep a grip on their power and influence was rivaled only by the drive to make money. Church officials at all levels were primarily concerned with selling get out of purgatory certificates. They also enjoyed spreading the word about how working for the church would ensure your social position on earth and reserve you a spot in heaven. This fixation on profit went so far, parishioners were often warned that any and all expendable income they came into possession of should be given directly to the church. In the book of The Evolution of the Gospel, a new translation of the first gospel by John Powell, published by Yale University Press in 1994, the author demonstrates how its peculiar characteristics can best be accounted for as being the result of insertions and manipulations. Jesus didn't order you to donate part of your income to the church until the church becomes so powerful, even more powerful than kings, that it can control Europe for the whole medieval period. Jesus didn't approve of the Crusades, the holy wars in the name of the cross, invading countries, killing innocent people and enslaving them, and stealing their riches. Jesus didn't approve of building your country's wealth on the sweat and blood of innocent enslaved Africans. Jesus didn't approve of wiping out whole civilizations of Native Americans. 
Jesus didn't approve of the idea, which is widespread now, that his religion is the source of violence or a way to control the masses. So it's better to avoid following him at all and become this tolerant, hollow Christian that stands for nothing. After all, we're living in the age of grace and just live a life of pursuing happiness in any way possible doesn't matter if it's moral or not. Is this the religion of Jesus or Satan? If Jesus sees current generations who are called Christians, however living their sinful lives, getting drunk, eating pork, ignoring prayers, promoting sexual freedom outside of marriage, supporting homosexuality, following whatever they see in the media, tolerating everything that Jesus will never tolerate, exchanging the truth about God with a lie, and finally hoping that they will be in paradise, if Jesus sees all that, he will say, wow, Satan, you have destroyed everything that I built in my life. People are running away from the religion of God and resorting to atheism because unfortunately, after distorting and manipulating God's words, they don't make sense to them anymore. Christianity already lost the battle against evil when Christians forgot their original message from God. Fortunately for us, throughout history, every time God's religion was manipulated or distorted, he sends us a new revelation, a new prophet to revert us back to our one and only religion. There is no religions plural. There is only one God and one religion, which all prophets, and I mean all prophets, were teaching. Everything else is just tradition of man and made up stories that you should take care of and not let it deceive you from the truth. Acts 2.22 Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him. God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. Romans 1.25 They exchanged the truth about God for a lie, and worshipped and served created things rather than the Creator.